In this video, hopefully, I'm going to get this 2CV finished today. Uh, I have tea. Uh, I am all set to um, get in the right frame of mind to get the job done. Just before I get started on that, I'm just having to sit down because it's quite a long drive to get here. Yugo Sana, very quick um, update. Uh, I know um, I've unleashed um, many, many comments because I was trying to turn the engine on the camshaft uh, pulley. Uh, I wasn't really trying to turn the engine. I was just trying to determine whether there was any movement in it at all. Because um, even though it's very difficult to turn a car on the, the camshaft pulley, it was just really to see whether there was any sort of an inkling. I don't think there is. It could just be it's slightly frozen up. But really, all I can do is what I've been doing, which is just put various concoctions, automatic transmission fluid, um, uh, free in one oil, whatever, into the engine, just let it soak in. And uh, so there won't be much of an update on that for a while, because really I want to leave that at least a week. And then I might well either try and get on the bottom pulley and give it a proper turn, or even put it in fifth gear and just try and move the car back and forwards and see what happens. Uh, with the plugs out it should quite easily then turn the engine if the engine's not locked solid um, I'm taking it a bit easy because while, while I said I could probably fit a Fiat Tipo engine um, It's got an engine built in Serbia um, And I can't help thinking that's what it needs so uh, we'll, we'll see uh, I would like to salvage that engine if I can uh, have a mixed success rate on salvaging engines but uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I'm waffling. I'm going to finish my tea and then we'll get into fixing the 2CV. Well, straight away, we've got a major issue here. There is fluid all around and uh, you can't see it there, but that is, um, it's LHM. It's brake fluid. And uh, I don't know where it's coming from. I mean, there's a limited number of sources. One source is the wheel cylinder itself, but there's no reason why that should be leaking. Oh. Ow! Come round the back and wait for the focus. There we go. And it could be the wheel cylinder. Uh, what worries me most is it could be the pipe. Uh, or maybe it's just because uh, the thread is broken off that wheel cylinder. I hope it's that. Um, I'm going to fit the new wheel cylinder as the first job and uh, we'll get this done and I might even get the tripod out if you're really lucky right I think we'd better hurry up with this one um, so what I'm hoping that's happened is just because I've moved the wheel cylinder um, I've disrupted the ability of the seal to hold fluid uh, I'm just going to try and find the new wheel cylinder which is over here so I'll have this to hand so what I'm hoping to do, because I can't get the union to turn on this brake pipe, unlike the other side which played ball perfectly, um, I'm just going to um, hold the union with a spanner and try and undo the wheel cylinder. And hopefully this will all work fine. Uh, where's my 8mm? That will be that. Uh, oh, get my head into the wing. Hold that and hope we can. Yeah, there we go, that's working fine. And that's all good, the pipe looks good there, so that's good news. I'll show you what's wrong with that in a minute, but we'd better get this connected before we lose too much LHM. There we go. Right, that, that's all oil tight. The problem with this cylinder, I'm going to come back out into the light. Oh, and just move you over here temporarily. Hello. So the problem with this cylinder is that it fell apart. Uh, this really shouldn't happen. Um, try and get some focus going on. Hello. So the problem with this cylinder is that it, it is literally broken off all around this threaded section. And uh, it's amazing it was holding fluid. It was holding fluid, which is why I felt safe enough to drive it home from the MOT test. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure what's happened there. I've never had a failure like that. It is most peculiar. And no one I've spoken to has seen a failure like that. So it's all very strange. Don't know why that has happened. 
hopefully the new one won't do that. Uh, right, I need to button that into place now, the two 10 mils, which hopefully I'll put somewhere safe. And uh, we can crack on with reassembling the rear brakes. Well, there we go, we've got the wheel cylinder in place. Um, I'm just cleaning everything down. That needs to be nice and clean as well, because the wheel bearing's got to sit on that. The cleaner that is, the more chance there is of getting it off next time. If there is a next time. And there we go. Now, uh, I had a trial last time I was here. Trying to put one of those new nuts um, on here. Uh, obviously, I didn't try very hard. Let me just see if I can find one of the new nuts. So what caused my trouble last time is that these brand new nuts, these silver ones, just don't seem to want to start on these threads. Uh, I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah, it gets to there, and it. If I force that, I'm going to knack at a thread up. Um, I don't quite understand it because here's half of one of them. Uh, which I should be able to see that it runs on the thread all well and good uh, which is fine now if I um, bring you in a bit closer bear with me while I just flip you around uh, might have to see if I can remember how to set macro mode on this thing uh, no I can't do that um, so bear with me you will see the, the, the first couple of threads are a little bit damaged and uh, I think that comes from the fact that you stake the nuts. And uh, if you look inside this one, um, just try and bring you here, try and get a focus. You, you'll see it's a little bit damaged where it's been staked before. Um, I'm hoping, because this is a nut from the other side, I can stake it in a different place. So I think what's happening is that damaged bit of thread is what's damaging there. Uh, I'm hopeful that the remaining threads that are in good condition are enough to hold the hub on. I don't know anyone who's actually had a hub come off a 2CV. Um, I consider it a fairly undesirable thing to happen. Um, so hopefully all will be right. But this old Golder nut seems uh, much more inclined to just screw on. You see how easy that is compared to the silver ones. So that's what I did wrong on the other side is I tried to force one of those new silver ones on uh, they're apparently rubbish a uh, bit distressing you do hope you're going to get quality with this stuff but as so often happens with aftermarket stuff you're never entirely sure uh, but yeah I mean the thread pitch looks identical it's just something is slightly different in the way these start actually looking inside the two you can see the gold one here on the left um, no you can't see it Come on, focus. There we go. It has a very slight taper on the inner edge, which is lacking. This one starts straight on the thread. Um, so I think that probably helps it just seat squarely before you try and turn it on. So that's going to be our nut today. We're not going to use the new one. We're going to bin that, I suspect. Um, and uh, yeah, job's a good one. Uh, next step is to lube up the pivots down here, um, which I'm going to use if I can find it, uh, the caliper grease, um, which should be good for this, it's ideal, there it is, for, um, I mean it's designed for disc brakes, Mintec, Ceratec, um, but I think on these pivots the whole point is it doesn't l let them seize up. And now I must talk about another point ra raised in a previous video, and that's um, concerning what I call concentrics. Uh, these circles, these should be slightly offset with a spanner shape so you can adjust the bottom position of the shoe. It's all about getting it centered. Um, these are perfectly circular and this one needs to come out. Uh, excuse me while I grab a hammer. There we go. Uh, that one's out. So these are perfectly circular. They don't offer me any adjustment at all. So um, while we're talking about centralizing the brakes, uh, yeah, I can't centralize the brakes even if I had the appropriate tools for doing so. Well, we are just about to fit the new adjuster from Retro Spec Parts. They make all kinds of good things, um, just the little things that make life easier, like mirror trims for two CVs. I think that's how Dara started, really. Um, but we've got instructions because uh, this kit can be used on different cars, it can be used on 
uh, front end of two CVs with drum brakes. It can be used on the rear of the Citroen ID DS or the two CV. But you need to arrange the bits in different ways. And uh, this little bolt, oh, let's, let's get everything out. So this is the new adjuster. That's the bit that goes on the back that you turn with a spanner to adjust it. And you need to lock this little bolt in, which is why I've got some thread locker. Uh, that's with a TH, I have a speech impediment. I'm not trying to lock up someone called Fred. Uh, it actually looks like it might have some on it already. It's got a glob of red stuff, but I'll add a bit more anyway. And the only thing that changes is the arrangement of all these bits and bobs, cams and spring washers etc. So um, I need to follow the instructions to make sure I get this lined up correctly. Pour out the parts and uh, I will work it out. I'll do that off camera. Ah, snag already. It will be necessary to drill or file the hole to enlarge it to take the new adjuster. Uh, I will have to um, file it because I have no power here so that's becoming a bit of an annoyance um, but nonetheless I think I've got a fine selection of files here uh, so um, see what I've got here we go then <laughs> enough for the no horrible noises there we go jobs are good so we put the spring washer on the back then we put it through the backing plate like so then we put the small spacer on so hopefully it'll turn on that then we put this bigger spacer on uh, then the cam and the cam must be that way and then the loctited bolt goes into that, so I'm just going to get the lock tight and we'll screw that in. Yeah, when you read the instructions, that is already thread lock compound, so I didn't actually have to go out and buy any. Uh, but never, nonetheless, it's useful stuff to have. And the final component, just looking at the diagram to make sure I get that the right way round, is that part. Uh, screw that into the bolt. Feels like a 10. And of course it's an 11. That's okay because I have an 11 on socket somewhere. That now means I can adjust the brakes like so. And that's good. We'll back that right off for now. Uh, that one's also backed off. So now we're ready for shoes. Right, we refit the non-eccentrics at the bottom and in goes the shoe. There we go. Uh, let's not forget these this time. Of where to hold this, there's the hole. No, I'm an idiot. What am I doing? I'm putting a spring on that side. Go. One in place, second shoe. I have already greased both ends and uh, both washers. There we go, we've got the pads swapped around, so that's got the gap there, that's got the gap there, so they're the other way around. Um, the furniture is back in 
to lock them, the adjusters are backed off so I can get the drum off. Uh, all that remains to do is um, lock these uh, tabs down. Where's my little hammer gone? Might be a good idea to refit the spring, that's why the drums aren't working. I'm rushing again. It's just a problem. There we go. See if that makes a difference. Yes. Quite tight on the shaft. That is the thing. So we'll gently encourage it along. Now I appreciate that using a scaffold bar uh, means it's going to be a bit sketchy at best getting this exactly where it needs to be on the torque level but um, few people have a torque wrench that goes up to 250, 270 pound foot. But I think it's fair to say you definitely want it too tight and not tight enough. Serious. There we go. I'm going to say that's where we need to be. May have gone a little beyond because the stake point is um, slightly beyond, but nonetheless, we're in. Let's tidy up this tube and put the lid on it before we squirt it all over everywhere. And now I can get staking. Where's my screwdriver to punish some more? Just done a quick and dirty bleed which involves um, wedging the pedal down, letting the air come out and then putting it back on again and that is not releasing. Remove the pedal pressure and round and round we go. So um, sound entirely central does it but hopefully it won't be honking when we go down the road. Uh, I've just booked it in for an MOT this afternoon so um, pressure is now on so uh, I'm happy with where we are there gonna jack it up so I can get these axle stands out put the wheels back on go for a drive around the yard uh, because of me I completely forgot to adjust the brakes so we'll come down a bit oh I thought I'd freed this one off oh there we go And we'll flip the other one down a bit as well. It's going to be fairly even on this. Okay, not with the extension now. Okay, so that one's just binding there, so we'll back that off a little. And make sure we've got room for this one to come out. It's actually better to have the wheel on because you can get a more accurate feel, I think. There we go. So that's too tight. Just back that off. Good touch. Just nip up the other one as well. That's too tight. That's where we want to be. Right, get the wheel on, do the other side, probably off camera, unless you really want to see me sprawling on the floor some more. Well, tough. Oh, she is fighting me all the way today. That's just pulled off. That's the live feed for one of the um, headlamp relays. 
Uh, I fitted it before I had proper crimping tools. So um, I guess I'll be fitting a new one of those. I might tighten the crimp on the other one. Oh Ellie, why are you so stroppy? Right, I've just moved her so her bum's sticking out before we try firing her up. And then we'll spin her around and that will make life a lot easier um, attending to various grease points and also um, trying to suss out what's going on with the wiring because we'll have better light. Uh, so she hasn't run for several weeks so we can probably assume she'll crank quite a lot before firing up. She has to draw the fuel through again. Should fit a fuel primer really. There you go, she fires merrily into life. Now we shall go backwards. Oh yep, that feels like good stopping power. Yes, it feels like it's stopping at the back, so that's good, good times. Oh yeah, I can hear the brakes working, so that's a good sign. Things you don't want happening when you book your MOT. Yeah, that's not great, is it? Well, at least it was an easy fix. Oh, right, greasing is next on the agenda. Right. Greasing, I found my other grease gun, thankfully. Hope it's got some grease left in it. Oh no. Oh no, there we go. Oh. Half a bit of grease. We're on the axle arms. Grease point on the dry shaft as well. Oh, I hate greasing. It's a pain. Very messy. Well, I'm hoping the transit van in front of me is a good omen because uh, we're on our way to the MOT test. Madeira on Havod have managed to um, book us in uh, this afternoon at very short notice, which is amazing of them. And uh, yeah, I've, I've got to get there in time because they're having a power outage this afternoon apparently, so I've got to get there to allow time to get the test done. Yeah, feels good, but loud. I've forgotten just how loud Ellie is and uh, she is many louds. Right, MOT is ongoing, time for the rear brake test. Let's see how they do. Well uh, the news is good, look we have a pass. Uh, we've got some advisory items, oil leak, shock absorbers slightly warm bushes which is a bit annoying um, because they're not old shockers they're only a couple of years old but they do need doing and both um, front wheel bearings he thinks have a slight bit of noise and I'm inclined to agree having been close enough to watch the test but obviously social distancing uh, so 8,000 miles it should be 218 um, between the MOTs she had a busy old year going to Croatia but uh, I thought I'd strap you in the head cam for a celebratory drive home we're in Pontrud Fendi Guide at the moment. And here we go. 
this is the road to Chigaron which is um, a lot of fun that's 50 bit of an incline coming out of uh, Pontre Fundigade it's at 60 Oh, I've forgotten how much better 2CV is. And I slightly forgot how much they roll as well. So yeah, welcome back Ellie! Woohoo! Pedals are perfectly set for a bit of heel and toe. It's where you operate all three pedals at once. At road legal speeds, there really is very little to touch a 2CV. You talk about risk, obviously I'm aware if we crash, if we hit someone, it's going to be awful, it's going to be horrendous. I've got no airbags, precious little metal to be honest. So I have to try not to get too carried away. It's almost more dangerous when it's a road you know. Especially when it's wet like today, but I'm trying not to take too many risks. Oh, I have missed this car! Oh, it's good to have you back, Ellie. And she's back in time for the anniversary. The anniversary celebrations are tomorrow for me and Miss Hubner. Uh, very excited about that. Very excited. This is a surprise. She doesn't know I'm coming home in Ellie. She thinks I was just working on her. So she's a bit annoyed I've not been responding to messages because um, I've been sneakily getting Ellie road legal again. Uh, so that'll be fun. We'll take her out for the day on Thursday perhaps. Because uh, when I first met Miss Hubner, I was road testing Ellie and uh, before we went to Croatia so uh, yeah lots of happy memories it doesn't really help with a child transport options because um, Ellie doesn't have any rear seat belts so while it's legal to carry the children one has to argue whether it's um, a good idea uh, I remember traveling in my aunt's Morris Minor convertible as a child and I would have to sit behind her because that didn't have any seatbelts in the back either. Uh, you don't sit behind an empty passenger seat in a Morris Minor because as my cousin discovered there is nothing to stop you hitting the seat going straight over the top of it because it folds and nothing holds it in place and you end up in the front footwell. So a uh, situation most regarded best avoided. Yes, Ellie still seems to be pulling well. Um, I, I need to visit a specialist. I, I want to visit Sparrow Automotive to um, do some tuning on this engine and see what the carburetor jets are actually doing. And that might be a time to see if we can get to the bottom of the oil leaks, perhaps do front wheel bearings as well. Um, not sure how much of that I'd be able to film, to be honest, because obviously garages are being a bit iffy about having people in their workshops at the moment. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens uh, because August next month now will be 20 years of Ellie and I together uh, can't quite believe that that is a huge chunk of life right it's starting to rain more heavily uh, I've got no parking position on the wipers by the way so to do an intermittent I have to stop it there by myself but 
there is a mist function built into the button so I don't have to press and press again I can just press and hold and the wipers will go as long as I do that there's a manual intermittent on these wipers but there we go we've reached Trigaron a lot of fun was had and uh, a lovely part of the world it is so I shall say thank you very much for watching um, don't forget to subscribe don't forget I've got a Patreon if you want to support that way um, or you can go to the Hubnut store and find donate options or buy lovely things that is also an option and uh, I very much look forward to presenting another video for your eyeballs in the future farewell Buddy roll! Oh, I love two CVs.